Welcome back, friends, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Balin seeks help with a notepad. Raoul shows him his first time with a sword, as Zoltana explains her stance on gods. Travelling down the river to Chatvok, Raoul takes the time to show them his memories of Daimarius. The group learn more about the different Dragonborn types, the sickness that can affect them, and how Dragonborn deal with their long-term sick. What else will our friends share with one another? Is going to chat what going to be the answer to Zoltana's questions? And who is Aima talking to back in Daimarius? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. let you guys start this uh balance vomits over the side of the ship zoltana but is crying i'm guessing rolls on the floor <laughs> i'm gonna you gonna say he's on the floor i'm gonna say he's passed out don't let his acid burn a hole in the boat no balance is gonna <laughs> after wiping the wiping his mouth off is just gonna go over put a hand on roll and just do like one side point of uh mend wounds you may absolutely do that brings him back into consciousness without mm-hmm too much of a problem you come round to not the way you normally come round out of these things it's more of a jolt than anything else still feels good clear <laughs> yeah <laughs> Demi looks over at the crying Zoltana the vomiting balance and the somewhat passed out Rajak and she's like is everything okay there do I need help is there a problem what's going on um no we're we're all right just um reminiscing about the past yeah no um w- we're okay, I think. I mean, no, I know that some memories can completely knock you ass and make you cry and make you laugh and make you sigh. All the good stuff, but the, actually literally knocking you off your ass um, and vomiting over the side of a boat, that's got to be some memory, dude. Uh, it's a little bit more than that. A little bit more than a memory? Well... Is it happening now? Are you sharing a vision right now? What's going on? We were. Please tell me everything. And she kind of like walks up and like puts her hands on like either side of your arms like, you have to tell me what's going on. Um, Raul? It's up to Raul. Go ahead. It's not the secret or anything. Is there a way for me to share it with Demi? Not really, no. Okay. You just tell her. Well, um, we've been trying to learn more about each other and on our pasts and all that, and I was curious about uh, Demarius and why they weren't looking into curing the disease that seems to plague some of their uh, race, and it was rather gruesome. Not going to lie. Sorry, Raul. Um, <coughs> sorry doesn't even cover it. They didn't treat their their sick. They just threw them in a pit of bodies until dead, or killed them and then threw the bodies in a pit. Uh, Demi immediately turns around and looks at Raul. The white dragon that you saw? Hmm. He was one of the cold ones. I used to sleep in the same bed with him for warmth to help him. And when he passed away in the, in the night, I did not take it well. And I passed out too. And his cold made me cold. And they put me in the pit, too. That is what I was told, anyways. I'm very sorry, Raul. It is fine. He was a very close friend of yours. Yes. 
against my better judgment. I should have known better than to make friends with those who I knew were going to die, but... Demi shakes her head. I've seen them. I had seen them suffer. The cold ones, you know. I thought maybe if there was something I could do. And, you know, as I huddled them for warmth, it... We were... We made friends. That was that. Try to help a little, and then you get trapped in the whole thing, you know? You said that you shouldn't have made friends with him. You're wrong. Imagine how he would feel if he didn't have any friends at the end. I've I've lost people, and I wasn't aware with them at the end. And I know that they were scared and terrified. I don't want to be alone at the end. You're crazy for thinking you shouldn't be friends with people who are dying. You're insane. You did a good thing. I know you got scared and terrified and stuff, but... Think how their life would have been, their end would have been without you. Rob just kind of looks down at the ground. Sorry, I probably shouldn't be overstepping my bounds, but... You're okay. I have a question for you, Rob. Sure. I don't know what happened with your aimer. <laughs> or why. But people saying you killed her. I don't really know, from what I know about you right now, and seeing the way you are, I don't believe that to be true. Do you know how she died? I know she got melted by your acid. Which is why I'm very, very confused. Wasn't my acid. You see her tilt her head as you say that, and she's intently staring at you as if she's assessing every movement. And she just nods. I don't know... Where someone got acid. But no one would believe me if I told them it wasn't me. There wasn't even anyone that asked me any questions. I just woke up in prison. And I immediately had to put on a tough demeanor to try to defend myself from the other prisoners to not draw attention to myself. I couldn't exactly run around telling everyone I was innocent. And um, I did not really have time to mourn, do anything. I just woke up and knew what had happened and that no one would believe me. Well, I assume everyone here believes you, right? Sultana nods. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. I, for my part, believe that Rod didn't do it. But we'll see. Well, let's put it like this. If your friends believe you, and we believe you, I mean, I'm kind of partly your boss, but also your friend. I believe you. We believe you. If your friends believe you, then we're either going to help prove your innocence or, you know, everyone else can, you know, do that other thing. Um, and go fuck themselves. <laughs> yeah. So we'll make exactly. that Exactly. They can go fuck themselves. Eloquently Thank put. You. Thank you. I, I don't always say things like how they're supposed to be, like really pretty, because I don't always have time. Well, I do have time. I just, I'm sorry. I'm less interested in convincing a bunch of people that don't care about me that I didn't do a thing. I just want to get justice for her before I die. That is all. I understand that. I did the same. So if I can help, I will. Same with you, Zoltana. You did the same what? Help. Justice, vengeance, you know, that stuff. When did you do justice and vengeance? Oh, well, way back when I was a far younger sorceress warlock. I mean, it was like way back in the days when I did those sort of things. I just try not to do that anymore because that's not a very good path to walk down. That's why I'm the pathway I'm now. That's probably where I'm going now. That's, that's very much where I am now. So I try not to do that anymore, but I do understand why people do it. And if you need help, I'm there. Just that we have to stop the apocalypse first. Sultana looks at Demi. And she's like, no, no, no. Explain this. When when did you... What were you getting justice for? Like, Je- Demi shouldn't have said that because this is Zoltana's shit. <laughs> shit. Um, uh, she looks at you and she says, well, everyone has their past. Everyone has a history of things that people want to keep secret. I... I it's not exactly a secret. I mean, what I what I did wasn't like the greatest thing in the world, but um, I had a family. I came from a tribe of orcs. 
Um, the only orc left is my brother. I made sure that people who did that weren't around anymore. That's how I got, well, that's how I got some of my powers. In fact, that's actually got a good, great, great deal of my powers. They're dead. They suffered the price, the cost of killing my family, our family, my entire family. Sultana nods uh, in understanding. And then she pats Demi on the back and she says, justice can be had, but it's important. And if you ever need to talk about like how you feel now about it or anything, I'm here. I know that you know, our boss and she like air quotes, she's like, but like you said, we are friends. So she looks down at you really seriously and she says, what I did wasn't just, what, what I did wasn't just, it wasn't, it wasn't justice at all. It just wasn't, I made sure that nobody stood at all. Like even the innocent ones, they didn't stand. No one. I tore them all apart, except one. One to tell everyone else not to do this to my family again. And then it was just me and my brother. Well, actually it was just me and then it was me and my brother. What I did wasn't justice. It was vengeance. And it was brutal and horrible and I never want to be that again. So don't do that. Zoltana looks at her and she's like, no, I, I understand. Sometimes we think that we're doing justice, or I think, and then but it's vengeance. And vengeance can be a form of justice, but it's easy to get caught up in it. Absolutely. And I don't want to see you people go through that. You seem like good people to me. I've spent some time with you now. You seem good enough. Well, you seem good. No, you are good people. I don't want to see bad things happen to you. I don't want to see you lost in darkness. It's not good. It's not fun. Okay. Is there anything else you guys want to do on your kind of seven days of almost uninterrupted boat travel? Cruise time. Let's play some shuffleboard. There is definitely not enough room for that. (laughs) Nope. Um... (laughs) <laughs> anything else you would have, guys want to attempt before we get into the meats uh the meat of this voyage uh well out of character meta do you want us to i'm asking if you want to i care little because there Story are things that happen. balance would probably want to share but do it Trust if you me. want to share do it this is the episode of sharing why the fuck not everyone's got to have some downtime all right so what is it that balance would want to do because I say, you guys have, I'm not going to like, uh, the story will happen. If you guys right. want to do a thing, we'll do a thing. So, so on, when Demi and Zoltan are having their chit chat about uh, justice and everything, whenever Demi, I guess, goes off and does something else, Balance just kind of sits down and goes, it's a funny thing, justice and the laws and everything, how all that works. Zoltana and Raul, you as well. I'm curious to get your opinion or your insights on the matter. If there's a law, and we all know the laws are there for a reason, if there is a law that is impeding you from doing what is considered right but not lawful, what is your view on the matter? Break it. I think it is circumstantial. And that laws are too general to be covering everyone's, it's not, laws are not answers. You are asking a former criminal about laws. (laughs) I am asking a paladin who worships a god of justice about laws. I'm Uh, not asking you as a criminal. I believe that uh, if a law is not just, break it. But is not justice the deliverance of the word of law? Ah, not always. So you believe in justice of a higher power as opposed to laws imposed by a government? She points sarcastically to her holy symbol. I am merely asking questions. <laughs> I'm not implying or anything like that. I no, no, she's like, get... she's like, well, yeah, sarcasm high, is higher not power. Let me ask you one. Hmm. My people would have me dead, threw me in that pit alive, because I was sick and I did nothing wrong. Is that right? It was law. 
now you're getting into the meat of things that I have been trying to learn and deal with. Which brings me to something that I want to share with you. In my youth, when I was being raised and trained specifically by my mentor, Talvin, he was trying to teach me about the laws of the dusk and specifically within our kingdom. And he was trying to teach me that just because there are laws does not mean that they are always right and that situations may demand behaviors that are not considered within the boundaries of those laws. Smart guy. There was a a time when I was still within my training that uh, Talvin had me sit in on a council meeting. There was discussion of some of the laws and of certain situations that had arisen. It was interesting to see how those of an older mindset view the laws versus those who have a younger generation like myself. If you'd like, I can show you. Sure. I just don't want you to, like, exhaust yourself. I don't know how your cool brain shit works, but... Uh, If I wanted to, I could do three of them in a day. It just would drain me completely, and then if we encounter Celestials, well, Tia help us. (laughs) Well, if we encounter Celestials, Tia help us anyway. (laughs) Fair enough. Um, so balance does the thing. Okay. You have been invited this day to sit in on the council meeting with, at your father's request. You're probably, let's say, let's say 90, 95, something like that. You're not too far to be coming, you know, perhaps having your own seat here anyway, but your father would like you to come, watch, listen, be quiet and not say a word. Uh Uh-oh, I'm Zuko. Shit. This is his instruction to you. Whether or not you follow it is very different. Today's council meeting involves your aunt, the queen, involves the grand marshal, your father. Uh, It it has Lashima, who is... Or Lashima, Lashima who is a particularly old elven lady herself, kind of crotch cheap, but she has a bit of soft spot for you. And Yethlan, who is officially the head of external affairs, but you suspect, as does your father, that she runs a network of spies. If this is your assumption about her. Founded or not, you aren't sure. Yithlan is a half-elven woman. She has amber eyes. But she never always looks the same. She's always slightly different. Her hair's slightly different. Her face held slightly different. Her voice slightly different every time you meet her. But the eyes never change. The group of you are sitting around a very large table. A table you know that was once built by the dwarves as a gift at the beginning of the Alliance of the Dusk. And... The item that is brought up on the table. Your aunt stands and says, It has come to my attention that one of my cousins, Julius, is in love with someone who is not of noble blood. Not, well, that's not the correct saying. Uh, And you see how, like, kind of twitch a little bit and you see a little flash across her eyes. And she says, they're in, they've asked if they are able to use our court as a setting for the wedding, a wedding to his half elven girl. This, uh, much in our past, we've looked over this, but there are some very ancient laws that. Leshmer has found which forbids such a thing and I think it would be in our best interest if we were to keep the royal family elven I think we should very much enforce this law and the rest of you you see your father 
kind of hold himself still in a way that you know that means he's not giving too much away. But being your father, you kind of get that little insight on him that he's probably not as comfortable with this as you would expect. You see Lithlan, sorry, Yithlan, look up and she says, Whatever you require, if it needs to be done, then we shall make sure that uh, does not take place. We can arrange such things to be done, if that is your wish, and your aunt nods. Um, what are our options, Lashma? You seem to know more of this than I do, thankfully. And Lashma just frowns, like scratches the side of her face, and says, Well, we can throw her in for, uh, well, for breaking blood laws. Uh, we can throw her in jail for that. We can, uh, we can hang her. That's always an option. That's an old school option, but it's one we can always do. And you see your aunt and Yithlan just nod in agreement and they turn and look at your father who waves a hand and shakes his head. I do not think that we should go that far with the girl. I do not think that that should be our option. I mean, if you do gainsay as to whom we are allowed to marry, it is your right as the queen in our family. But to kill this half-elf girl is over the top. And you see your aunt just shake your head. I don't think so. We have to keep our lines pure. Keep everything in the family, so to speak. Everything elven. That's what we are. We're elves. We're not half-elves. We're not dwarves. And she looks around and she locks eyes with you for a moment. What's playing on Laffian's face? He's trying to maintain composure, but his lips are probably pursed, and his fingernails are, like, digging into the countertop. His nails are, like, white. Do you have a problem? He just meekly shakes his head. You notice your father looking at you? And you see he's come to some sort of... That shaking of your head has told him a lot about you. And you see maybe a flicker of disappointment, but then it's gone. Not even sure you saw it. Well, well, that looks like... uh, What's that? uh, One, two, three, and... Oh, yes, and Afian. I'm very glad to have you on our council one day. You understand how things are. Okay, uh, Yithlan, see it's done. And with that, memory phase out. Balance looks really uncomfortable. What you would know is that this half elven girl didn't die. You know that the rumors were that she ran away, that someone got her out before it was too late. This is what you know. Your parents are just kind of the same. Never mind. What do you mean? I, the people need good leaders. Leaders are most of the time not good people. I think that you have the right to be whatever type of person you want to be. That's a dumb bullshit law. And, and holy shit. Mm-hmm. I like your dad. My father is an interesting man, for sure. Please, show us more of him. <laughs> Please don't. I've already had to, like... I- you know what? You can if you want. I'm not going to stop you. You know what? <clears throat> you guys both showed something. I will show you something that made me me. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Are we about to watch your conception from birth? Is, is this what's happening? Blonde, are you okay? <laughs> Yep, sure. Let's let's rock this shit. We'll call this like before the beginning. Ba- yeah, backstory in canon. again. 
<laughs> Please just call it something like that, like in canon before the beginning. Um, this is not a before the beginning episode. This is all in fucking canon. Um, okay. Balances backstory extravaganza. Yes. <sighs> Using the last of your side points for that day. Yep. Not that it really matters. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You see, you're much... I mean, for those of you who are used to being very tall, you're a lot shorter. I mean, a lot lot shorter than even Zoltana. And you look up at this dwarven man and you instinctively know that this is Zoltana's father. He's a big scraggly beard. He's a well-built guy. He knows his stuff. You get that air of dangerousness about him but also fairness. And the little Zoltana is following her dad, going towards going towards this beautiful waterfall, which is at the centre of the Dark Hammer stronghold. And he looks back and Zoltana hides, but she's pretty sure she's been spotted. And as she looks her head back round again, her father's disappeared. And she looks about scared. You realise that you're all alone in the middle of this place you've never quite been to before. And then as you turn back, you bounce off of... Ah, that's it. You bounce off of her father. And he looks down at you, smiling. And he says, Sultana, what are you doing here, girl? I just really wanted to watch you... I wanted to go to work with you, Dad. Sultana, you don't even... You don't even know how to hold a blade. But one day I will. Hold on, I'm going to do this in Dwarvish because it's going to be cuter. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, hold on. Oh my god. But one day I will. And that I'll be big and strong like you, Dad. And I'll be... I'll be tough and no one will mess with me. And she's literally doing the like the, the the holding your arms up and pretending you have muscles thing. Mm-hmm. And he looks down and you just see like a father's smile and just a, a strange little pride in his eyes. And you see him take you by the hand and he leads you along to a, a little alleyway that seems to be empty. And he looks left and right, looks right, says, don't you dare tell your mother. Cause she, she is scarier than anything I ever have to face. Trust me. And he pulls out one of his daggers and he hands it to you, handle first. She uh, grabs the handle and just like delighted. She's super happy. He puts his hands around both your wrists, around your wrist and he looks at you very intently, drops down to one knee and he says, Sultana, this isn't a toy. If you point this at someone, you have to be willing to use it. And it's, using it will change you. It won't necessarily make you a better person. Are you ready for that little one? Yeah, I think so. I just know that, well, it's important to make sure that we, and it sounds like she's rehearsing some, like like it's something she's rehearsed, Mm -hmm. that we make sure The double ones are protected and safe and keep it secret. You've been following me, haven't you? She uh, shyly kind of like does that like little kid thing where they like kind of turn a little bit. It's like, yeah. You're going to be quite a handful if I don't keep an eye on you, isn't you? All right. Uh Uh-huh. No, I'm (laughs) going to be honest with you. You're a little bit too young to be travelling with me right now. But I'm going to teach you. I'll teach you how to be strong, and I'll teach you how to use that. So if you ever get in trouble, at least you've got your basic instincts to fall back on, which is to use this. And he again shakes the wrist with the knife in it. All right, Dad. All right, let's do lesson number one. Stabbing them. And she like and hmm? <laughs> no, yeah, go. <laughs> she like jumps up and down. She's like, "Yay!" <laughs> it's disturbing but cute. <laughs> you see a little flicker of pride in his eyes as that memory fades out. I have to say, you motherfuckers. 
That's where the magic happens outside your comfort zone. Zoltana looks at them and she goes, right, so that was my dad. Um, he was killed. I- I'm pretty sure by uh, the man I was going to marry. And that's part of why I became the way I became my dad. Not the Zoltana that you met, but that was because of what happened to Odette. Just thought maybe it would help you understand me a little bit better. Since we're all having sharing time. Well, no better time. Maybe you are right about the thing you said where bad things happen to people because of fate. Maybe. She kind of like looks at balance. You had a discussion on fate and I wasn't around. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to be yelled at for being pessimistic. (laughs) Well, you are. I know. You know why. Now. Well, after seeing what you had to share, a little bit understandable. You and Ama would have got along. <laughs> oh, and I wish I could have spoken with her. She would have known exactly what to tell you. You guys spend time sharing some of your stories. You spend time practicing, training, talking to one another, learning more about each other's secrets, about your pasts. Demi shares you some of her past too. If we have 10 days of boat, can Rawl be proficient with sword? <laughs> I, t- I, I will make a compromise because 10 days isn't long enough to be proficient with a sword yeah um, no way no way um i'm Get, going getting to there? say huh get it getting there getting there i'll tell you what raljak roll <laughs> I already know how this is going to turn out. Every time you say roll, roll something, I just know it's going to be bad. Roll 40d2. Wait, how many? 40. 4 zero. 40 d2s. Yes. 59. Okay. Not below average, so I'll take it. You need to spend 59 individual practice days before you become proficient with a sword. Oh my god. Because I believe it's actually something closer to the lines of a couple of months, if not a year. So, and that's with a dedicated master. You do have dedicated masters around you. Balance is actually proficient and good at swords. Uh-huh. Um, and I am better. Is actually good, proficient at swords. There is Zoltano, who is freaking amazing at swords. Um, I'm, you might say that I am the best. You're one of the good people. Um Yes, there are people around you who are good and who will be able to teach you and if you're dedicated to it, but it'll be 59 individual practice sessions, individual days, not like I'm going to do five in a single day. No, that's BS. That's just one day. All right. So we're at 57 right now. Yes. Oh, wait, no. Because it's 10 Mark a day off each one. So if you're going to, at this point, when you enter chat vault, we'll say it's 10 knocked off. 11 if you include the other one. 11 if if we include the previous one, which I will. So there you go. That's your that's your marker. That's what you have to do. You have to tell me you're spending time actually doing that. Neil, put it on your character sheet somewhere so I don't have to keep track of that. Oh my. So yeah, I have to, to do 48 to, more. Yes. This is going to be entirely up to Raljak to check. And then when you hit the last one, we'll have some grand ceremony where you'll get a little certificate. No, I'm joking. Uh, Can we? <laughs> no. If I mean, if it's going to make take... a little certificate, Raul can now use the sword. Go for it. But No, yes. but I think it would. We'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. It's absolutely fine. But um, yes, I'm happy for you to do it. But that's how you guys are going to learn the ship. That's how you're going to do it. Um, okay. Seven days into your trip. It's sun is setting. We're finally getting here. The sun is setting seven days into your trip. Um, where are you all? Uh, What's everyone doing? Sun is setting. You're on a boat. Sultana is putting on lipstick. Balance and Rawl are sparring. If Rawl's okay with that. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Everyone take a perception check. 
That is a two. Oh, wow, Casey. That's a 10 for balance. Natural 20. That's a 23. Jesus Christ, Neil. As you are sparring with balance, you look sort of uh, in the direction that the boat is traveling. You're amongst some trees now. Um, it's, it's, it's darker than it would be as if you were just out on the open water, but you're kind of not overcast by these trees. And as you look down further, you see a fire. Wait, that's not just a fire. That fire is about eight feet tall and definitely humanoid. And as you kind of look and you hold Balance's attention to not continually hit you with the sword, you see off in the distance, you see a kind of skeletal figure, but the proportions are completely wrong for anything you know. The legs are exceptionally long. The arms are exceptionally wrong, long. The hands and the feet are proportionate as if it was just a human but the skull itself is focused more in the chest and the whole thing is a light and it's stalking its way towards you in the boat. Ugh. Um, balance. What? Stop. What? Stop hitting. What? Swords. Stop. Okay. What? Two things. Uh-huh. There's a skeleton man coming. Um. And number two, how flammable are boats? Um. How flammable are boats? Bad answer for both. Balance is going to look, I assume Rawl is indicating where? Yes. yes. You can all see this now. Um, the rest of the crew can also see this because of Rawl's like, um, damn me. it's pretty small. <laughs> yeah, when me. someone says, how flammable is the boat? People worry. <laughs> <laughs> damn me. Yes, what? Oh, 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 no, that's not good. That's that's terrible. That's actually very, very bad. Huh. I've seen one of those in a while. It, that's terrible. Uh, that. Celestial. Here, take your sword. No, nope, nope, that's not celestial. That's definitely not celestial. That's that's not a celestial beast. That's not celestial. That's the other one. That's the other kind of thing. What's the kind of thing? Oh, Infernal? yes, the infernal fiendish things. Yep. Yeah. Um. Mm, yeah. Mm, this is not good. If if that's that's coming from the direction of Chatvok and the passing portal was in Chatvok, then there's a chance that that went to Bellum. Oh no, this is very bad. Means that maybe things are broken out. Uh. Um. We might need to deal with this. The boat is still floating its way down the river towards the skeletal creature, which is coming towards the boat. Zoltana unsheathes Kalinmorn. It's been a time. It's been um, a while. How big is the river? Um, the river is at this point not a particular like uh, the rivulet that you've been following down to Chatfort. This particular one is not. It's maybe ten feet wider than your boat. So it's like twenty across. We'll say. Yeah, say twenty across. Yeah. How deep? Uh, it's pretty deep. It's um, three balances standing head on end. <laughs> oh my god! Is that the new measurement? Yes, it's my new height measurement. It's three balances tall. Width is dwarves. Height is elves. Yes, let's do that. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't do I don't do distances. I don't know why people got asking me to do this. I don't know. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> oh fuck. Do you know what that is, Demi? Well, I don't exactly know what it's called, but I know that it's very, 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 very bad. It's covered in fire, which, um, well, that means that's generally immune to my fire. Most of my things I do are fire, apart from psychic stuff. I do psychic stuff and, like, you know, to terrify people, and then I do fire. Um, pretty sure it's immune to the fiery thing, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. What about the psychic stuff? Uh, I don't know. I've never actually fought one. I've seen them. My brother's told me about fighting them, and he's like, these are bad things. Definitely don't hit them with fire. I'm like, oh, crap, I better not hit them with the fire then. I, mm, uh, this could be interesting. How am I supposed to punch that? <laughs> Don't. That's the answer, Ral. Don't. Are we going to avoid it? Does it look like we'll be able to avoid it? You're floating down a river, which one might consider some sort of like... <laughs> well, like, can it's we, a river? <laughs> can we move towards the opposite bank so that like... Absolutely. It's the, a fire uh, monster, we're in I- water... Can I stunning strike the boat and make it stop? <laughs> no. No. Uh, no. We need to keep going further. I don't often say the word no. no. <laughs> you cannot stunning strike the boat. It's a joke. Uh, uh, Bowers cut it turns out. to the... No, the... keep it. <laughs> People need to know that you want to stunning strike a boat and the answer is no. Uh, <laughs> Balance turns to the crew and says, can you put alter our course so that we're closer towards the opposite shore? 
Um, as you're saying that the crew um, already under the direction of the uh, as the, the gnomish captain is is really beginning to like panically just like steer the boat away from the fiery uh, like skeletal creature that's coming in the direction of the boat. Um, you they they try they look like they're trying to pick up speed so they can out possibly outrun this thing. You know that this thing can go very very fast if needed, um, but it is getting quite dark. Apart from the fact there is a giant flaming dude on its way towards you. Uh, Balance is going to activate his Psychic Assault focus. Sure, which does what? Uh, that's the plus two, da- or, yeah, wait. It's like, so, yeah, plus two bonus damage with Psionic Talents. It makes it to where he can't see how scared Raw is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the main important part. <laughs> um, okay. Raw. Yes. Uh, Balance is going to take his longbow and his quiver and he's going to toss it over to Rawl and just say, um, try to do something with that. <laughs> right now? I'd, if we get into a fight, don't use your fists. Um, I have an idea. You, how, di- how deep is the river? Three balances. Three, okay, three balances. That's like roughly like 15... F- actually, it's more like... That's like 18 feet deep. Okay. Sure. How big is this thing? It's, uh, let's say, standing about eight feet tall. Perfect. Uh, okay. As soon as it's right by the edge of the water, um, I'm going to do a thing. Okay. If it's within like threatening distance of us, I'm going to do a thing. Oh, it's so threatening. Um, as it, as you guys kind of like head down towards it, it kind of like waits uh, for you. It kind of like leans down so its hands are on the ground and it's just kind of like rocking from side to side. Its skull just like almost rolling in a perfect circle in its kind of little socket area. But it's definitely looking at you guys. It's doing like a... like A little sway. Yeah, a little sway. It's looking like it's getting oh, ready it's to so do creepy. something. It's doing what now? It looks like it's getting ready to do something, but you can't tell what. Okay. Uh, it's by the edge of the river? Yes. Balance is going to do a thing. What's Balance thinking he can do? Um, so Balance is going to spend five side points, and he's going to try to use his psionic powers to overpower this thing's control so that he can manipulate it. He wants to try to temporarily take it over with his new ability that he just got. Mm-hmm. Uh, broken Will. It needs to make a DC 15 intelligence saving throw. If it fails, uh, as an action, you target one creature you can communicate with via telepathy. I'm assuming I can. Uh, the target must make an intelligence saving throw. On a fail, I get to choose the target's movement and action on its next turn. If I if the successful save, uh, the target's unaffected and I can't use the ability on it again until I finish a long rest. Mm-hmm. And it's immune if it's immune to charm. It rolled a 17. Fuck me. Nope. Damn. Everyone roll initiative. It's going to go first, however. Okay. I tried. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Initiative. I got a. I got a one. Natural one. Ten. All right. Let's get this shit started. Um, would someone be kind enough? Sorry. Would someone be kind enough to roll a d twenty for Demi? Sure. I tried to use my most powerful ability off the bat, and it didn't work. Correct. Uh, Demi got an eighteen. Ah, uh, fucking hurts. Um. Actually, I don't know why I'm doing that. I have a demi sheet. I don't know why I just didn't use it. Well, I, I did it already. Thank you. Don't Man, that was going to be so cool. It would have been. I was going to make it, it just fucking do a swan dive. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to stop it. I mean, it's a fire monster in water. I would assume something good would happen. You know what happens when you assume? You make an ass? I end yeah. up in prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you have in prison, yo. Uh... Okay. All right. So uh, let's hit this off. Sultana, what'd you get? I got a one. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Rorschach. I got a 10. At least I gave for all my bow, my bow and arrow. I- Balance. Uh, Balance got a 17. And Demi got an 18, yeah? Yep. Bows are harder to use than swords. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, mechanically speaking, you can still use it. You just don't get proficiency bonus. Uh, let's see. Which is still good because you're a monk mm-hmm. and dexterity is your shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> Which means it gets to go first. Okay. All right. It gets to go first. You see it lean down and look up at you as you attempt to manipulate its will. And you just see the skull rolling. And you just hear a... (laughs) As it disappears. And then you just hear... (laughs) As it just... (laughs) Appears in the centre of your boat. Oh my god. All of you take five radiant damage. Why is that thing a dick? You feel the heat from it just crackle across your skin. It's very painful to be anywhere near. It just burns and hurts. How many radiant damage? Five, please. Okay. This is a very small boat, too. (laughs) Yep. And uh, the creature just, yeah, it just mocks and laughs you for the moment. Okay. Um, It's now Demi's go, who's in a bit of a panic because almost everything she does is fire. (laughs) Um, but uh, she throws her hands forwards and you see her cast six dark purple spikes of energy just erupt from her hands as they fly forward and they attack each of these things just like square in the skull and you just see it kind of like flinch you see a tiny amount of flame go out as she does 19 points of damage okay it is now balances go um, all right. Is there a way for me to back up as far as possible so I'm not right up in this thing? Yeah, but you're still basically right up in this thing. This is a small boat. Okay. All right. Uh, God. Balance is going to try another new thing. Uh-oh. Um, Balance is going to spend another five psi points, and he is going to attempt to project psionic energy into a aura around him. One might say in a 60 foot aura uh, in which he is using strategic mind. Mm -hmm. Which does what? As an action, you exert an aura of trust and command that unites your allies into a cohesive unit. Until your concentration ends, any ally within 60 feet of you on their turn can, as a bonus action, take the dash or disengage action or roll a d4 and add the number rolled to each attack roll they make that turn. Perfect. Okay, you guys become aware that Balance, although backing up, is somehow just making you want to be a better fighter to listen to his suggestions, one might say. Hmm. He seems to know what he's doing in the middle of this fight. Okay. Is there anything else you're doing? Um, both swords out. Excellent. Okay. In kind of like a parrying stance, <laughs> one might say. Rorschach. It's your go. Demi, can you use a bow? Uh, yeah, I can use a bow, but I'm pretty sure that here. magic is going to be my answer here. Okay, fine. And she'll take the bow from you, but like, look, like she knows what she's doing with it, but this is not normal for her. Well, she can just hold it and use magic if she wants. Yeah. But Raw has a different idea. <laughs> Uh-oh. That involves him probably taking damage. But anyways... Uh, Raw's going to run up to it and do basically three melees because two attacks, one bonus attack. And for one of those hits, he's going to stunning strike. Okay, go for it. So if he hits on any of those, it'll be... Yep, yep. 19 to hit. That one hits. Six damage. 16 to hit. Don't forget the d4s. To the attacks, not to the damage, right? Right. So he's ready hit for that, yep. Uh, 16. Yes, that hits. For eight damage. Yep. 17 for five damage. Wow. That also hits. And then, okay, there's the DC. I just, it didn't show me until I clicked it. Uh, It's a DC 14 constitution saving throw. 15. Okay, cool. Sorry. Oh. Do Um, I take damage from punching it a lot? You do not. Um, oh, so wow. that'll be 11 plus 8 is 19. You go to hit it. I need to know something. Mm-hmm. Are your fists at this point in your career in being a monk magical or not? 
I don't think that they are, no. Yeah, at this point, I don't think they are. If you go to punch it and punch it hard, like your your knuckles will like bounce off of this bone. You don't seem to be impacting it any way near as solidly as you think you should be. You know how hard you punch. This is not reacting correct. Okay. Sultana. I am ready. Last but I know not least. exactly what I'm doing. Yes, I like those words. I am going to cast Bane. Uh, so he has to make a DC 14 charisma saving throw. Funny enough. Actually, you guys know nothing about him. That was a natural 20. I'm so sorry. Damn. Oh, well. Uh, and then as an um, bonus. Ah. You can attack as a bonus if you want because of your commander. Oh. I can. She can. Right? As a uh, bonus action, she can attack because of you? No, dash disengage. Oh, okay. That's okay. As a bonus that. action, I was going to do Val of Enmity. Oh, fuck yeah. And she's pointing at him with Kalinmorn and saying, Hey, skeleton dude, go jump in a lake. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> Kalinmorn is like, If you under the correct names when you insult it, it is called a mall Oh, uh, Zamalika Bell. I'm close enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so Zoltana has pointed the sword. Um, Kalen Morn has corrected what this thing is called. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you are, you're up and close to it. Uh, the Malika Bell is, uh, now in the face of Zoltana and in the face oh, of... Oh, wait, he Russia? was telling me what it was called? I thought he was telling yeah. me how to tell it to jump in a lake in Abyssal. That's what I thought you were doing yeah. as well. Its name is Malika Bell. <laughs> I don't think he speaks Abyssal. Yeah, he does. He does? Oh my god, he knows everything. Yeah. You need the sword. Right here I know, on my... Hold on. I like it to be a surprise at the languages that he knows, because then I'm like, oh, I'll just screw myself. It's always funny. Yep. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm wrong. Uh, infernal. Celestial, Elven, Infernal. Fuck yeah. Um, no, it's it's a Malika Bell. That's what it's called. I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly. I also don't care. It's your um, game. <laughs> who cares? It's our world. This one's called a Malika Bell. There's, I put an extra A in it, but I can't pronounce it without it. So whatever. Um, okay. It's you, both you and it. It's raises its arms and it reaches down and it slashes at both um, Raljak and Zoltana and you feel this hot, fiery burst in your faces. All right, Zoltana. Yes, for a 26 versus your armor class. My armor class, yeah, that definitely hits. Okay, and that case you take 10 fire damage. Eat me. (laughs) Ral. Mm-hmm. It nat one, so you just see this fire shoot above your head. Um, it's not pleasant, but it's not too bad. Um, okay, uh, that's its go. <laughs> are the crew fighting? No, the crew are too busy kind of getting away and terrified. Um, they are not really fighters. Got it. They are They are crew. Um, also, otherwise, I have to try and do like five NPCs and F that. It's bad enough with Demi here. Um, okay, uh, it's now Demi's go. Demi looks at the bow. She looks at her hand. She looks back at the bow and she will lift one hand and she will cast, attempt to cast, Hold Person. You see her eyes glow purple. You see her put her hands together, um, link her thumbs, and she looks directly at the creature without a single word. That's what it got on the dice, which was a 19, so it saves. The uh, fuck is wrong with this creature? What the hell? Uh, okay, um, Demi's spell fizzles out. She looks pissed off and annoyed. Um, right as so. you would expect. Yeah, as you would expect. She is being thwarted by this fucking thing. Balance, it's now your go. All right. Balance's going to do another cool thing. Is he really? He's, t- he's taking on the mantle of leadership. He is becoming one with the leader. Mm-hmm. So he looks at Zoltana 
and imbues his words with psionic power and says to her, Zoltana, I know that you can do better than that. Get him. And I'm using command to strike. Okay, which does well. Three side points as an action. Choose one ally you can see within 60 feet. That ally can use their reaction to immediately take the attack action. So does and that mean I is, attack right now? Yes, twice, because you're level five. Reaction. Mm-mm. But Reaction it's taking the attack super. action. It's not uh, an opportunity Yes, then, attack. yeah, you can attack twice. Go for it. And you have advantage and a d4. Uh, sweet. Hold on. And, my d- and I have a d4 to my... Make sure you're rolling with advantage. Oh. Okay, Very important. so the first one hit for 25 versus his armor class with 10 slashing damage. Okay, hold on. Nice. And the second one was a 22 with, fuck it, 14 slash damage. I don't give a fuck. Holy shit. Um, because Kalin Morn is, funnily enough, a magical weapon, um, you begin to, like, as you smack hard onto the, uh, I'll just say the shin of this thing, you see a crack forming in the bones. As you do a total of 24 slashing damage. Balance is becoming this so This is where good. I have to do numbers very quickly. This is where okay. Balance does all the awesome things. By the way, while Zoltan is doing this, she's yelling, uh, fuck you, whatever the fuck you called. <laughs> so I can't Malakabu. remember. The Malik Zabar, whatever. Say it with me, Zoltana. Mal-a-k-a-bel. malik bell Okay, cool. Um, I also believe if you want, you can smite because you hit. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking damn right I will. This isn't even your turn yet. Yeah, I know. This is so good. God, I love it. This is what I needed with balance. Other people to do your work for you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, murder it. Extra damage is... 2d8. So you're just burning a first level spell slot on one? I'm burning a second level spell slot. Aha, uh-huh, so that would be, what, 3 Yeah. Oh, you're right. That's 17. <laughs> yeah, I'll allow the reroll. I don't give any sword monkeys. Um, What are you yelling at this? How, how are you smiting? What I usually say is Remind me again, because I always... Bring down the holy thunder. (laughs) Thank you. I always fucking forget what I I say. I think you might need to change Otana's name to bring down the holy thunder so you'll remember to do it. (laughs) I'm going to change Divine Smite to bring down the holy thunder in my thing. There Uh, you go. (laughs) Note for Neil, play Thunderstruck in the background, please. Okay. um, Bring down... Oh, sorry. Let me do it. Bring down the holy thunder. There you go. There it goes. Accent and and everything. everything. Perfect. Perfect. Um, You guys, like... You you see balance kind of giving Zoltana that edge to just attack and attack now. And you see her sword slash left and slash right. And with the first slash, you see a bolt of lightning come down from the sky and just echo and rattle all around inside its skull and its ribcage area. Casey? Casey? Yeah? Casey? I am so happy to have bro fisting right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's now Ralph's go. Dude, we're such a good team. So Rawl sees the sword uh, and notices that it kind of cracked the bone. Yes. And he looks down at his jacket and I'm going to elbow the living shit out of this thing. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how that works. <laughs> Uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm gonna about elbow to set it. a very dangerous precedent if I allow you to do this. Okay, what's what what kind of action is it to remove my jacket? <laughs> it's a hoodie. It, yes. It's the, the main concern I'll is t- that after I'll that action you, you go straight to jail. I'll tell you what. <sighs> I've literally I'll allow you to do it on okay. your first attack, but your flurry of blows are not magical. Is that an okay compromise? Yeah. Okay, then in that case, I will allow that. You'll have to tell me which ones are magical because of your hoodie and which ones are blow, blow your blows. I this is so fucking blows. cheeky, dude. This is so unbelievably cheeky. It's the only reason I'm allowing this right I now. I haven't used flurry of blows because I'm going to use stunning strike again. I'm going to strike where I see the weakness there in the crack. Okay, sure. Go for it. Why the, why the hell not? 
Oh my god, I think you <laughs> just broke Salsa, uh, Belanda, who I almost called the name of my character. I'm having a night. <laughs> no, so no, Rawl's having a night. So am I. That was um, a 10. Uh, that was a 10 and a natural one. Uh, the answer to your query is no. Um, you go to hit it in the crack, but its leg just moves out of the way. Okay, I have an extra attack, yeah? Yeah, yeah, cushy. Getting it. Out of D4. Hold on. <laughs> 14. You just <laughs> hit. Yes! Neil, Neil, Neil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. There's so much bro fisting here. I feel, I feel unhappy. I can't tune in. <laughs> Audio medium. Um, v-, v. All right. V. I need that saving throw. Yeah. It rolled a natural 19. Fuck. Fuck okay. this thing. Keep saving. Well, it's seven damage. Is that non-magic, right? That is my magical elbow hoodie attack. <laughs> you you basically just like see the crack, you miss it the first turn round, and then you just, just like basically put all your weight into it and slam into the crack, and you see the crack essentially get deeper and wider. You yeah, it's, more cl- it's clear that elbowing is not like my thing that I do. You get one more attack though. No, no, that was both of them. Bonus action. Oh, okay, you're right. Okay, Because you're a monk. Yeah, this is the one that is not magical. 15 right. for 7. That hits. Um, this time you go to give it a good punch or a kick or something, not involving your hoodie. Um, <laughs> and again, you just see it just doesn't have the same impact as just elbow, pile driving elbowing into it. It's just not the same. Okay. <laughs> impact what, nonetheless. What though. action would it be to take off my jacket? I don't think I got an answer to that because I'm probably gonna do that. It would be, let's say, a bonus. Okay. Why not? It's, it's, got it. It takes you no time. It's just pull it straight off. I can put my hoodie off in like 30 seconds. Oh, second <laughs> yeah, so. uh, I'll do that next turn. <laughs> 30 seconds, so it's going to take five rounds. Yes, yeah, five goddamn rounds. Um, okay, it's now Zoltana's go. Oh, I'm ready. Um, I'm going to just fuck this shit up. Uh, I'm going to fucking bam bam. Because I get two attacks. Advantage. And advantage, so bam bam. So the first one was a 15, which hits for seven damage. Um, and yeah, you managed to go for like the other leg. You've seen that like you've managed to crack one of these leg bones and that Raal is now going hell for ever to just like elbow the crap out of it. You're like, maybe I better not swing my sword at his head. Um, so you go to attack the other one. And yes, you managed to see a crack for seven damage. Um, and the next one is a 14, which only, again, just hits for 14 damage. Um, Hell yeah. I will ask the question I will come to resent. Are you smiting? Oh, fuck yeah, I'm bringing down the Holy Thunder. At a level one this time, though. <laughs> I'm so happy you renamed that. <laughs> for 11 damage. Oh, bring down the Holy Thunder. Also, I think it's all all caps. It looks amazing on the fucking. <laughs> it actually genuinely does. Um, as you scream this and thrust your sword into its chest, you see the sword itself just erupt in a bright light, and it's so bright it blinds all of you just for a split moment. And as your vision comes back, you see the skeleton is just standing there, stock still, the fire completely gone have vanquished this enemy. (laughs) Hey, we did it! Hey guys, Sultana here. We totally did a murder on that Malik-Zabel. Malik, wait. How the fuck do you say that? Eh, whatever. Anyway, we totally killed that fucking thing. So, uh, good episode. Anyway, as always, thanks to you, our wonderful listeners, for continuing to support our podcast. Uh, thanks to the SPAC network, which is our parent network. Go check them out, the SPAC.network. We have a website. It is theluckydie.com. We have a Twitter. It is at TLDpad on Twitter. And you can find all of our cast members' Twitters and our guests, like the lovely Rethix, who plays Callanmorn. Thank you, by the way. And uh, yeah. Oh, we have a Facebook (laughs) on Facebook, The Lucky Die. Uh, Yeah. 
And you can send us an email, the lucky pie, the lucky die podcast at gmail.com. So thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to rate and review. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. The Spock Network. Imagine what your idea can do. 40 D2s. Yes. Is this just because you want to kind of do the erase on the roll 20 thing? No, roll 40 D2. I'm just joking. (laughs) It's a joke that I'll cut out. Don't worry about it. Thank you. If you have Neil, how's it going? I have to have jokes that I cut out too. <laughs> if I cut out Neil. your jokes. I have to. I have to be fair and make bad jokes on purpose that I'll cut out just to be fair to you guys because I cut your jokes out. You're welcome. Now I just have this image of Neil going <laughs> nice. back listening to the jokes and being like, <laughs> <laughs> "Keeping mind, mine's funny." Hey, podcast listeners, do you like comedy? Well, how do you like the highbrow and tasteful comedy that ensues after an oiled up, overly muscular fantasy hero stabs mythological creatures square in the testicles by accident? Ah, my square testicles! If you do, then you'll love The Legion of Renov. The Legion of Renov is a comedic romp into the world of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, available now at legionrenov.com and on iTunes.